And then, of course, it is the the last question, Dan, is 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 you know what whatever was going on, uh, how, how did that affect wins and losses? You know, uh, how did that actually yeah. get put the into NCAA play? They won't care about that. They won't care about. Why that. not? I mean, isn't that the ultimate crux of it, Dan? Well, like, because if you try to cheat and it doesn't work, you still tried to cheat. Okay. So, like, if you went, if, if this was the old days of college football and you went and gave a brand new car to a crappy recruit and he turned out not to be good and you lost all the yeah, games. I got it. <laughs> oh, no, I hear you. Okay. You still broke I, the rule. I got so, you. For Harbaugh's reputation, forget it. Just by well, I just mean, by letting this out there, his reputation is is significantly damaged. No one's ever going to believe he didn't know. I mean, it is, that's just the, the way it is. That's, the NCAA made a very bold move by bringing this up. Now, they probably felt we have to alert these teams that there might be a competitive disadvantage and all that, but that would be something that would be weighed. Yeah, but, but whether but, or not but, you can prove he this, people will always some some segment will always believe. Well, you only beat Ohio State because because you knew their signals, even though the facts may not bear it. That's the problem with this kind of an allegation. Yeah, I mean, Aiden Hutchinson uh, stealing signs or souls. Yeah, you know what I mean? Course. Like let's let's right. let's be straight up. You know, uh, but. That said, you know, if you do have an elaborate scheme, as the NCAA is letting people know, um, and as you point out, you know, breaking the rules, you should be, you know, um, called into account for it. But all that said, I mean, letting teams know this is a possibility. Every single blog you read, every single story you read is that Michigan was known for being really good at stealing your signs. I mean, Greg Schiano made not one but two highly veiled at the time confusing references to something in a halftime conversation with the Big Ten Network in a game, by the way, that he led 7-0 because of some remarkably uh, successful, um, you know, big play to break Michigan's defense in a way that Michigan's defense has not been broken uh, all season long. You know what I mean? Like, so so what's the point of, of letting people know about it if uh, everyone kind of already assumes it? You know, Dan? So and and then that's and then and then how for, how effective can it be? How, yeah, yeah. Right. I, how I, how effective can it be if everyone is knowing about it and you know switching up their signals? You know. I would so. I would think any coach that doesn't switch his signals up with great regularity is a bad football coach. Um, it's certainly at that high level. I mean, there were very public stories of like Clemson playing Ohio State a couple of years in the playoff and Ohio State huddling. They, they huddled more, I think, last year in the game against Michigan because they were worried about why wouldn't you be worried about this? You can't trust anybody. This is college football. You can't, it's football, right? They hold up the, 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 the thing in front of their mouth. So you can't read their lips. Like this is what it is. So there's no, you know, you should, I agree with you all on that. These are the rules. You can't scout off campus. Were they really scouting though? That's the question. If, if we found out that Michigan was sending six of their staff members somewhere, analysts or grad assistants or whatever, flying them around the country to watch games, that would be a significant violation, whether you agree that that should be a violation or not. That would be a significant violation. Sure, right. But if it's just six guys that kind of know this one low-level staffer, and I don't know that's the case at all. No, I understand. I'm, saying, I'm running the gamut, right? So if Harbaugh's like, you go here, you go here, yeah, you're in a lot of trouble. If it's, it it's may not be a vast conspiracy – it's usually conspiracies are pretty small. They're usually very tight because they don't last. So what if it's one guy who no one's paying any attention to and wants to paint himself off as the expert at cracking the code and he's getting a little help to do it? That, that would be the kind of the swing. If you're a Michigan fan, maybe you hope that. But the NC rules have the rules. You're not allowed to scout. Are, are these guys scouts? Are they, are they people with the university? Are they boosters? Are they just uh, like what, what are they? We have so little information on what the allegations are, and that's tough for Harbaugh. I don't think too many people are going to shed a tear for him, but <laughs> it's hard to fight back when the allegation is so significant. Well, then I he guess cheated, right? So the the way to you're a cheater. Well, in what way? Uh, we're not saying. Well, that's a tough go, but. That's where he's at, and that's that's where the NCAA is at. So, that, so that in the two minutes I have left, the way to fight back is to say, okay, now that it's completely out there and everyone has been officially warned by the NCAA that this is 
potentially happening and maybe to you that they have now been given the heads up to do what you assume they should be doing anyway, which is switching up signals before playing any big opponent. Um, that now they can go out there and say, uh, here's, here's, here's us beating you uh, straight up um, if that is the way to go about it. Or, or, hold on a minute, this thing actually gets put to bed in some way, shape, or form by the NCAA, the Big Ten, um, in short order. What, what, is the, what are the next steps uh, in the couple minutes I have left here, Dan? Yeah, it would have to be, the, I don't know, continued investigation. Do they interview people? These things usually take a long time. Yes. So, like, the idea that they're just going to rule on this, and, I mean, I've heard people, oh, they'll get, you know, banned from the playoff this year. They took six years on the Kansas basketball case. I think we're getting this done in six weeks. The, the literal legal argument of who rep counts as a prohibited figure to go scout off campus, that alone would take a long time to hash out. So there are already a ton of lawyers involved in this thing. So nothing's going to happen quickly. Uh, would the NCA come back and exonerate? Like if he's, yeah. you know, like, you know what? It was just this one guy. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Would they even be able to figure that out? Or would they be able to crack it and be like, look, we've got text messages and videos and all of that right away and release that. I don't know. We don't know where this is heading or going, but it's, it's not as cut and dry, and there is a lot of just kind of a, there are some probable arguments that aren't Jim Harbaugh, a guy who I've been told doesn't know how to log into a computer, is running a massive spy <laughs> operation. Okay, now, he's very smart at football, yeah. and maybe he is, but maybe he isn't. So, you know, the first inclination when you hear this story or first, you know, heard about it, it's like, oh, boy, you know, sign steal and all that. But, again, it's. It's, it's complicated. So you get down to it, there's only going to be a couple questions that have to be answered, and none of those are really clear right now. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.